Now we are on to our main story of the day. This is the QAnon father. So, you know, speaking of misinformation, speaking of QAnon, um, Carolyn Richard says, anti-vaxxer healthcare professionals are the absolute garbage cesspit of humanity. If they cannot understand basic science, then they should be immediately removed from healthcare. Full stop. Huge failure of healthcare education that a YouTube video and a meme erases anything learned to qualify for those jobs. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, it. What 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 do you do to these people like who are, you know, healthcare professionals who are nurses and who are using their position as a nurse to go on TikTok and to go on Facebook and say, hey, as a nurse, I can say that the vaccine doesn't work. It's like, um, like that should be grounds for you losing your your license to, you know, practice or some shit because like that, that's fucking dangerous. Um, Neil said misinformation about how quickly the COVID neck COVID-19 vaccine was produced also not realizing there was a blueprint for it already because of SARS Opal says this shit is the same as QAnon parents denying that school shootings uh, that their children were a part of and survived accuse them of being paid actors and lying oh my I, I totally forgot that that shit exists and it just I mean can you oh my god can you imagine like I mean granted there's already people who are Holocaust deniers who deny slavery existed. So, I mean, this isn't a stretch, but it just, it's so disturbing. It's just so disturbing how prevalent this is in the United States. Like, the need to just feel like, you know, oh, well, what's going on in the real world? world? That's the fake news. What, what's actually going on is under the surface. No one's actually talking about it. But if you connect the dots in obscure random ways and you, you know, track the numbers um, and like, it, I, I, again, I, I read, I think it was, um, I don't know if I read it on stream, but I think I might have read it myself. But there was an article just talking about the, um, you know, the prominence of these alternative ways of thinking and the way that so many Americans, especially conservative right-wing Americans, um, have just dismissed science, have dismissed history, have dismissed, like, common sense um, in exchange for a worldview that they feel is more American, that they feel is more you know, um, patriot, I don't, I don't fucking know. I, I, I don't even know how I'm, I'm trying to boil down the shit. Um, Kunin says, yes, SARS vaccine research has been going on for 20 years already. So vaccine research and development was not as fast as some people think. All right, let's go ahead and read this ridiculous story. A California father who claims QAnon conspiracy led him to kill his two children. FBI says. A California father took his two young children to Mexico and killed them with a spear fishing gun after he claimed he had been enlightened by QAnon and Illuminati conspiracy theories, federal authorities say. According to a criminal complaint filed in federal court in California, Matthew Taylor Coleman reportedly told investigators he had been receiving visions and signs revealing that his wife possessed serpent DNA and had passed it on to his children, and that by killing him, by killing them, he was saving the world from monsters. Saving the world from monsters. Um, one, like, it really speaks to how distorted this man's world is especially when you take into consideration this idea of thinking of his his own children as monsters and his wife as being like the mother monster who passed off this dna and then to spear like i mean I, not, not to say that like one form of 
killing is better than the other or anything like that, but more of an, an, an analysis of what does that weapon of choice or the method of murder say about that individual or how that individual thought of that victim. And so to use a spear fishing gun, you're using that for like a fish. You know, you're not even use like you don't use that for, you know, this. I mean, I guess you can use it for sharks, but yeah, I mean, you're using it for for fish. If you're, if you're trying to catch some food, if you're if you're looking at something as just tiny and insignificant, and I don't know, it's just there's something really inhumane um, about killing your own kids with a fucking spear fishing gun. QAnon is a conspiracy popular among some of the far right that claims Democratic politicians operate a cabal that kidnaps and tortures children using their blood in satanic rituals. It wasn't the first time authorities responded to a crime based on a conspiracy theory that originated on the Internet. In 2016, Edgar Madison Welch entered a Washington, D.C. pizzeria and fired a rifle into a door, claiming he was investigating the debunked Pizzagate rumor. That conspiracy theory claimed that the Comet Ping Pong restaurant was the hub of a satanic child sex abuse ring associated with top Democratic politicians. Welch was later sentenced to four years in prison. How authorities tracked down Matthew Taylor Coleman. Coleman, 40, was first reported missing by his wife. Identified in the complaint as AC on Saturday, she was unable to reach him by phone after he left in the family's van with their two children, a two-year-old boy and a 10-month-old girl. I don't know why I thought at first the story was about like a 10-year-old girl. I mean, not that, you know, that's like any better or worse, but Jesus, a 10-month-old girl. Um, the next day, at the suggestion of police, AC used the Find My iPhone application to track Coleman's last known location to an open-air shopping center in Rosarito in the Mexican state of Baja, California. Um, Opal says, pervasive anti-intellectualism is to blame. Yeah, I'm definitely like this, you know, this conservative conservative mindset of oh everything that they're teaching at these universities is you know uh, indoctrinating our children with marxism and feminism and just this overall mistrust of the sciences of social sciences um yeah i spot on um Obel said, uh, schools are full of it starting from the top down seen it happen in district meetings that i've been a part of and Cheryl Norman said, there was a report out last week that people who get their news from the Book of Faces are actually more prone to the misinformation than those who get it from Fox News. Facebook, despite their latest attempts to stop the misinformation, are actually doing massive amounts of harm. And one of the reasons why is because of the nature of content creation. And I know, and I know this is kind of weird, especially since I was, you know, plug in my, uh, my branding agency where I you know, help people with content creation. But the thing is, content creation as a whole umbrella is anything. It's propaganda. It's live streams. It's Instagram content. It's TikTok. It could be anything. Content creation could be anything. And within that process of content creation is the creation of certain messages. And when it comes to Facebook, you can have a brand that is like, oh, we are the freedom fighters of America. And you could be sharing sources from like really seedy places, really like fucked up conspiracy theories. But because you were under the umbrella of this freedom fighters of America kind of brand, you are able to pass off your information as, oh, well, this is just, I mean, these are, all right, do you love America? Well, then this is just information just for regular Americans. And the problem with going back on what Opal was saying about anti-intellectualism is that a lot of people just don't have, like, they are v very, very media illiterate. Um, and when I, say, when I talk about media literacy, media literacy, ha I can't find the, what is the damn specific definition media literacy 
Uh, media literacy encompasses the practices that allow people to assess, critically evaluate, and create or manipulate media. There you go. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't have um, a very good media literacy, and especially a lot of conservatives have horrible media literacy, especially when it comes to um, the anti-intellectual type of conservatives. But the ones who do have good media literacy are actually these super capitalist, unfortunately, these are the super capitalist, more far right conservatives who actually do know how to build an audience, how to create propaganda, how to, I mean, whether you're talking about Prager U or whether you're talking about, you know, MAGA or Proud Boys, um, they've all been using content creation as a vehicle to radicalize their people. Um, I mean, this is like a whole other story, but this is also one of the reasons why I have my agency because like I started to realize like, all right, you know, I could go work for a fucking company and like help sell apples or, you know, cars or insurance or whatever. But like, what is going on with what's happening in politics right now? And what are the forces that are going against this shit? Like who is there to dispel the myths of QAnon? Who is there to speak up um, in defense of, you know, critical race theory and feminism or trans rights. And so I wanted to be able to work on brands that cared about that shit and not brands that were afraid of it. But that's another conversation. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and read more. All right. Um, how authorities track down Matthew Taylor Coleman. Coleman, 40, was... Oh, sorry, I already read that part. Uh, when Coleman arrived Monday at the U.S.-Mexico border crossing in San uh, Isidro uh, without his children, law enforcement officers took him into custody. Earlier that morning, Mexican authorities had discovered the bodies of two children with puncture wounds in their chests. Coleman apparently told investigators he knew that killing his children was wrong, but said it was the only course of action that would save the world so your two kids are single-handedly holding the world captive you're not just your kids your two-year-old kid and your 10-month-old kid what the fuck um mexican officials also recovered the weapon bloody clothes and a baby's blanket authority said coleman has been charged with the foreign murder of u.s nationals um kunden also commented uh, isn't this basically the next iteration of eugenics demonize to dehumanize first leads to reverse victimhood so in my mind he probably sees it as an act of justice because he sees himself as a victim hero savior. I, that sounds spot on um, because that really is. I, I mean, how else are you going to justify the not only the murder of your children, but just like the gross, inhumane manipulation of the murder of your children? Because in plain text, what happened was a man murdered his children but for this guy coleman he thought oh i'm not just murdering my two babies i'm murdering the descendants of this monster of a woman who i married and now my kids are these you know aliens who are going to threaten the world and i am I am the only one who can see this. I am the I am the chosen one, and it is my duty to, you know, capture my kids and shoot them with a spear fishing gun. And so the only way to really rationalize that is to make yourself the victim, is to, you know, create this reverse victim mentality where you feel like you are the one who is, you know, uh, uh, going to be swallowed alive by your lizard children <sighs> jesus um ross says how long did it take uh, for us to find a murder connected to QAnon?" um neil says yes that's why i'm wary people who say i don't trust nor watch mainstream news yeah like when people say oh i don't trust 
mainstream news. It's one thing to be like, okay, I don't rely entirely on CNN. I don't rely entirely on one news source. I get that. But for people who are just like, oh, I don't trust journalists. I don't trust, you know, anything published by a, uh, by our, you know, a major news organization. Um, and yet the places that they share their information from are like Facebook memes or like some fucking wacko far right person podcast or fucking Joe Rogan. Like, bro, are you kidding me? Like there, there are legit people who are out here quoting Joe Rogan as this, you know, bastion of vaccine intellect. And it's again, that, that is, that is the era of content creation, the era of anybody can, you know, any, anybody can justify their beliefs in any way. Um, for better or worse. Uh, Ross said, let's not mix up politics and criminality. How many of Chicago or Baltimore's latest gun violence killers also happen to strongly support BLM? I mean, I, I think that's a very, very different conversation because... The like you, then you have to talk about okay well are the are those instances of gun related violence with people who strongly support Black Lives Matter is that is is that murder an instance of them expressing some sort of Black Lives Matter value because I never really hear anything like that um, whereas this incident in particular very specifically is about QAnon. It's not even just about like the fact that this person is, oh, he just happens to be a QAnon person who just so happened to murder his kids. The method, the intention behind this and the trend and the pattern that this shows with other cases is very consistent with QAnon and not just a affinity or uh, you know a thought that QAnon exists but an actual direct correlation to these people killed killed someone because of QAnon beliefs uh Kundin says these people don't realize that if mainstream news is propaganda then so is non-mainstream news we still have to use critical thinking and discernment no matter who or what the source exactly and just going back on media literacy like that is um the irony of a lot of these people who are against non main like against you know non mainstream news um because you would think that if they were to not rely on CNN or NBC that maybe they'd be more open to i don't know Al Jazeera or or or, or some or NPR or whatever and yet again time and time again their actual sources tend to be just some like really fucking bogus you know blog website or whatever um, Tasha says, now we are getting into clinical mental illness. The question is, we're, uh, where, uh, were there subtle signs he displayed before this instance that were overlooked that he may have a mental illness? Catherine artist, it's misogyny and projection of self-loathing in the most extreme form. He is clearly the only monster here. I wonder what type of dangerous mental illness runs in this guy's family. I mean... <laughs> Even even then, like I think it's just even to, have to 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 bring up the conversation about mental illness, you have to know a lot more information. I think it's just um, it tends to be a very convenient excuse. Not to say that you are all just making excuses or, or anything like that, but I think it just tends to brush off the issue when we just say, "Oh, it's mental illness." Oh, school shooter, mental illness. Oh, QAnon killer, mental illness. Oh, a cop who shot uh, a innocent civilian. Oh, mental illness. It's like we can't just like default to that. And I think that you know, yes, we can have a conversation of whether or not mental mental illness played a factor in this, but you could also then show so many counter examples of people who also experience that same exact mental illness who don't go off and murder their families. And so that's why I think the more relevant details are the ideas that are in place because when that person who has a mental illness is experiencing something, they are using that information that, the, that they have in their personal bank to then act on. 
Um, I hope that makes sense. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I, 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 I'm not trying to discredit um, the concept that mental illness might play may ha might have played a factor, but I don't think that it is this dominant narrative that we should be relying on when it comes to explaining these things. Because um, I think, like Catherine said, I think misogyny and sort of that projection um, of self-loathing and what Kundin was talking about, of this idea of reverse victimhood, of seeing yourself as this fucking main protagonist who is being victimized by your own 10-month-old child, that is the fucking problem. Um, all right, so I wanted to dive into this a little bit more because like okay i was like uh, reading the shit and i was like okay um this sounded really familiar with a lot of things that have also been going around so i found this article in 2019 QAnon believing proud boy accused of murdering lizard brother with sword so this was published january 9th 2019 a self-proclaimed member of the far right proud boys group who also believes in the QAnon conspiracy theory, allegedly murdered his own brother with a sword. Prosecutors say Buckley Wolf, 26, killed his brother in Seattle on Sunday night by stabbing him in the head with a four-foot-long sword. All right. I'm just saying, does anybody notice just the weird link between like the, the the type of brutality that is being enacted when these people are killing the these so-called lizard people, whether it's their kids, their brothers, like it almost feels like they're killing them like they are an animal, like with the sword, with the spearfish, like that's why I think the 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 context of understanding like this conspiracy theory is so important because it shapes how these people are you know, uh, rationalizing this shit. Uh, Wolf, who prosecutors say exhibited signs of mental illness, called police himself after the killing and claimed he thought his brother was a lizard. Um, the Seattle Times reported, when detectives arrived, he asked them if they saw other lizards. According to court filings, Wolf has been charged with second-degree murder. A Facebook, a Facebook page confirmed to belong to Wolf by a local Seattle TV station is filled with references to Trump and other conservative figures, as well as the cartoon character Pepe the Frog, who has been embraced by the far right. The Facebook page also features a declaration of allegiance to the Proud Boys, the group's first degree of membership. I'm a proud Western chauvinist, and, and, and I refuse to apologize for creating the modern world. One post from February reads, before referencing the Proud Boy slogan, Uhuru. <laughs> Wolf apparently made other references to the Proud Boys on Facebook, including interacting with area Proud Boys. He also posted a graphic praising the group's Pacific Northwest branch, which has repeatedly clashed with left-wing anti-fascist demonstrators and rallies. The Proud Boys national leadership claimed a statement in a statement Wednesday that Wolf was never accepted into the group because of mental illness, because of mental issues. But pictures online show Wolf with other members of the group at Proud Boys events, and he's friends with a number of other Proud Boys on Facebook. Boom. Right fucking here. Right here. Right. The Proud Boys national leadership claimed in a statement Wednesday that Wolf was never accepted into the group because of mental issues so you see why i i point out that it's so important to not hang on to this whole issue of oh well it must be the mental illness whenever that happens it always always becomes a scapegoat and when it, whenever it happens to white people it always becomes a convenient scapegoat to be like oh they didn't do it it was the mental illness and yet whenever it is a person of color who gets murdered, then the justification shifts a little bit. Oh, well, we shot this person because of the mental illness. So it's like, I, I, I know that someone is probably a lot more proficient in explaining what is going on right here that I'm trying to explain, but like that is my main issue is that it becomes this 
focal point that people can use and distort however they want. Um, and again, like I said, it's not to say that mental illness is not a factor, but it shouldn't be the only or the deciding factor. <sighs> um, Ming says, is it mental illness as much as believing some crazy shit and then acting on it, though? Um, yeah, I mean, that's also the thing is that like just because you like have some fucked up beliefs in lizard people does not mean that you have a mental illness. There are so many people who have some, again, it's like, it is so often used, whether it's like, oh, this person got caught, you know, being racist, boom, mental illness. Oh, this person got caught um, being a straight up fucking pedophile. Oh, mental illness. It's like, can we not, can, can we please like segment and have this conversation and hold people accountable for this shit? Um, Edward said, the question is what ideas, ideologies were the catalyst for abhorrent behavior versus mental illness, lack of discernment that leaves people more susceptible to act on the ideas, ideologies. Boom. hundred percent. Uh, Carolyn Bradley says, I think we need to ask ourselves why when white men murder people, it is a mental illness. But in this same conversation, somebody was attempting to pathologize black people in Chicago and gun violence, which is a huge anti-black talking point, by the way. Um, like using the shield of mental illness to create doubt to why white men commit uh, um, egregious crimes is literally white supremacy in action. We cannot fathom how white men can do these kinds of things, even though history is literally littered with examples of their callousness and vile behavior and beliefs. Also, the way that white men who killed his family, also the way that the white man who killed his family was depicted versus other people. Mm hmm. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And And like... <laughs> and <laughs> and this is why again like going into discussions of media literacy that's why it's also important to be analytical of how we report on these stories and the fact that like why is it that you know reports on white men who go on these fucking shooting sprees or murdering sprees they are written off as like oh oh my gosh he was up until that moment that that just the moment that the bullet pierced the baby or that the spearfish killed the child right before that he was a good dad oh, great great dad great human he was a, a loving father and a great worker and he volunteered and oh my gosh look at him you know uh, 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 at the soup kitchen like we go through these enormous lengths to humanize and create this backstory for white men so that way when we look at their crimes we just contextualize with all the other amazing things they do whereas like carolyn said when it comes to black folks when it comes to latino folks when it comes to immigrants when it comes to people of color when shit happens to us oh well it that it, it it's because that's who they are you know, you know that that's what minorities do that's what people you know that's what these immigrants do and so um i a hundred a hundred thousand percent agree with carolyn um, and lastly, Maureen said, shouldn't at this point, uh, extreme religious beliefs be classified as a mental illness? Clearly his extreme beliefs played a role. Reli shouldn't at this point, extreme religious beliefs be classified as a mental illness? No. Um, I mean, like I said, I, I guess if you, it depends on how you're sort of classifying what extreme religious beliefs are. Um, like, to what extent are you meaning, like, you know, oh, this person really believes in Christianity and, like, oh, like, he, you know, he says that he sees God, like, walk into his room and, you know, God blessed him before breakfast. Like, that kind of shit. Because, again, like, I'm an atheist. <laughs> so I I could just be like, oh, you believe in, you know, a God? Well, that shit is extreme to me. So that's why it's it really, it can be really, really dicey. But I think I know what you mean in terms of, like, extreme religious beliefs but even then i am not so keen on this idea of um also my name is pronounced uh, carlin oh carlin sorry about that carlin um but yeah i i i'm not too keen on just like immediately associating um certain people's ideologies with mental illness i think we should have a dual conversation of how does mental illness play a factor how do these ideologies play a factor? All right. 
Moving on, uh, let's keep reading. Wolf also appears to be a believer in QAnon, the baseless pro-Trump conspiracy theory that posits that Trump is engaged in a shadowy war against a secret cabal of pedophilic global elites and the Democratic Party. Um, in court papers, prosecutors cited one of Wolf's social media posts about the cabal as proof that he's mentally ill and represents an extreme danger. Ah, see? Again. <laughs> Again. In court papers, prosecutors cited one of uh, Wolf's social media posts about the cabal as proof that he's mentally ill and represents an extreme danger. Um, I think, again, I think social, his social media posts definitely express that idea of extreme danger, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, Wolf frequently posted QAnon-related content on Facebook, including references to QAnon Believer's motto, where we go one, we go all. <laughs> So fucking corny. Uh, he encouraged people to share QAnon graphics, telling his followers to share this meme ammo. He also made posts in the style of Q, the anonymous person or group of people giving the clues that have inspired QAnon, and posted links to the now-closed QAnon subreddit. All right. Um, let's go ahead and move on to this next one, because this is another, like I said, this is a fucking rabbit hole and you just keep going down and you just start tumbling into these corpses and you're like, Oh my gosh. Like this isn't a one and done thing. This isn't just one random person who thought that someone was a religion person and decided to kill that person. Uh, this article over here, like QAnon's capital writers, the Nashville bombers lizard people theory is deadly serious. The, dead, the deadly capital siege was fueled by far-out conspiracy theorists, including Ashley Babbitt, a QAnon supporter fatally shot by police as she tried to breach a barricaded doorway. Meanwhile, federal investigators are still looking into excuse me, still looking into the belief system of Anthony Quinn Warner, who made statements about a conspiracy of lizard people taking over the planet before the explosion that damaged. 41 buildings and injured three people in Nashville, Tennessee on Christmas Day. Many are scratching their heads. Why are people embracing such bizarre ideas? Oh, and by the way, this was posted in January of 2021. Uh, why are people embracing such bizarre ideas? The notion of shape-shifting, blood-sucking reptilian humanoids invading Earth to control the human race sounds like a cheesy sci-fi plot. But it's actually a very old trope with disturbing links to anti-immigrant to anti-immigrant and anti-Semitic hostilities dating to the 19th century. Bonkers? Sure. Harmless? Definitely not. Law enforcement says uh, law enforcement law enforcement sources say Warner's writings indicate his interest in a number of conspiracy theories. including the lizard people takeover. He may even had have had a pastime of hunting such aliens in the park. Before the blast, Warner sent packages to friends filled with material expounding on his bizarre worldview. They included a letter that began, Hey dude, you'll never believe what I found in the park. The world ruled by lizard people fantasy shot to prominence in recent years in part through the ramblings of David Ick a popular British sport, uh, sports reporter turned conspiracy theorist known for his eccentric ideas. Ick would, only, uh, Ick would have you believe that a race of reptilian beings not only invaded Earth, but that it also created a genetically modified lizard-human hybrid race called the Babylonian Brotherhood, which, he maintains, is busy plotting a worldwide fascist state. Don't you think it's so funny when the fascists want to talk about the rise of fascism? <laughs> oh, 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 those, oh, those kooky fascists. Um, this sinister cabal of global reptilian elites boasts a membership list including former President Barack Obama, Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain, former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, and Mick Jagger. 
This nonsense is espoused by a variety of internet conspiracy mongers, including far-right Trump-loving QAnon adherents, one of whom was accused in 2019 of murdering his own brother because he thought he was a lizard. That fucking article we just wrote. As many as 12 million Americans believed in this lizard people conspiracy in a 2013 public policy polling survey. It's safe to assume the number is higher today. The outlandish trope has roots in the second half of the 19th century, when the Industrial Revolution, uh, when the Industrial Revolution, Darwin's theory of evolution, and rapid scientific advances upended time-honored tradition, traditional ways of life, leaving people unsettled and unsure what to believe. It emerged more strongly toward the end of the century, when anxieties about perceived outsiders, especially Jewish ones, were fueled by waves of immigrants flooding urban centers in Great Britain and the United States in search of economic prosperity and religious freedom. The tide of immigrants ignited cultural conflicts as well as health and sanitation crises in cities that lacked adequate infrastructure for the millions of arrivals. Amid this tumult, a colorful array of gurus and charismatic figures arrived on the scene claiming secret knowledge of world affairs and answers to burning questions. The writings of the Russian-born mystic Helena Blavatsky, the founder of Theosophy, bristle with comic, uh, cosmic energies and mysterious knowledge, including her claim of an ancient race of dragon men from a lost continent mentioned in her esoteric 1888 tome, The Secret Doctrine. An ancient race of dragon men. An ancient race of dragon men. God, someone has been playing way too much fucking Skyrim. Um, Blavatsky's uh, florid imagination influenced a slew of artists and writers, including, as political science Michael Barkin notes, one Robert E. Howard. His widely popular Conan the Barbarian story. Oh my god, what? Hold on a second. Blavatsky's florid imagination influenced a slew of artists, including... Oh my god, this influenced Conan the Barbarian? Holy... His widely popular Conan the Barbarian stories in the early 20th century featured reptilian humanoids who deploy their shape-changing and mind-control talents to dominate humanity. Wow. I actually... Like, I remember Conan, you know, because I grew up in the 90s, so, you know, Arnold was fucking everywhere. But... I didn't know about about that. I wonder if like some of these reptilian believers, you know, because you know how they like read into shit way too much. Like they want to be, you know, media critics, and yet the way that they criticize media is so fucking far out. Like I wonder if they look at Conan the Barbarian movies as some sort of like, you know, uh, Q dump. This <laughs> this like treasure trove of answers. Bram Stoker's, uh, Stoker's Dracula, the 1897 tale of a Romanian vampire who plans to take over London using his renowned shape-shifting abilities, also carries traces of this trope. The Count possesses a number of reptilian qualities, from his association with the knightly order of the dragon, from which his name derives, to his cold-blooded nature and talent for shimmying down walls lizard fashion. Dracula's protruding teeth, pointed ears and blood-sucking habits mark him as a species apart, a motif of othering, read by some critics as code for Jewishness. What the fuck? I had no idea. Wow. That's, you know, it's, gosh, that's so fascinating because, you know, I was thinking about how Prior to, you know, the invention of, like, comic book superheroes, like Superman, Batman, um, you know, who, like, they, they, you know, those superheroes really represent modern heroes and these modern characters, right? But prior to that, um, a lot of the characters were in, like, in books and in films, and some of the most dominant characters um, are, like, 
these monsters, you know, Frankenstein and uh, Dracula and werewolves and like these very traditional types of monsters. Um, and I know that like Dracula, in, oh, sorry, um, Frankenstein in particular, or actually I say Frankenstein's monster in particular represents a lot of different social um, like, like, like Frankenstein is a, is a, is a symbol of more than just some green monster guy. Uh, but I didn't know that there was that link or that sort of, you know, yeah, wow. Uh, from this perspective, Stoker's book is part of the British response to the increasing number of Jewish immigrants arriving from Eastern Europe. The vampire is a stealthy invader, passing as a proper citizen, but secretly plotting domination and destruction. And a couple of weeks ago, or I think or rather a couple of months ago, uh, we had an office hours where we we're talking about anti-Asian racism and we we're talking about Fu Manchu. And I was talking about the way that the Fu Manchu stereotype was this like evil Asian character with like long nails and sharp teeth. And like uh, uh, this character was always being portrayed as somebody who was, you know, hungry to take over the United States and, you know, kill all Americans. And I just find it so interesting to really look at early Western media from the lens of sort of going back on what Kunden was saying about this idea of reverse victimization. You know, whether you're talking about like... Uh, um, someone like that QAnon dad who had to reverse victimize himself in order to, you know, uh, uh, rationalize why it was okay to kill his kids or whether you're talking about people who are rationalizing this idea of turning black people or Asian people or Jewish people into monsters in monster movies and then casting themselves as the heroes to banish the monster. So it's just like, it's... <sighs> It's a, it's, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot to digest because it just reminds you of how media isn't just what it is on the surface. You know, that the, the, the way that we write villains in movies, the way that we write characters who are heroes and, um, you know, the qualities that we show as being heroic and being noble. Like, it's so important for us to, like, actually analyze that shit and really think of, like, why do we still cling on to this idea of the Superman? You know, why do we cling on to this idea of the rogue cowboy? Like there are these certain narratives that exist and have always existed. And there are very specific reasons why they exist in the mind. And I think oftentimes those narratives were invented as a way to rationalize something else problematic. So by extension of, oh, I don't want you know, I, I read these books and these sci-fi books and they're about foreign invaders. And there's a lot of fucking, like, if you just think about all the movies that are about foreign invasion with white people who are the protagonists being invaded by brown people or Asian people or black people or whoever or zombies or whatever, it's always really fascinating to look at that from the lens of white folks projecting about colonization. Like... The more I watch movies and the more I watch like these, you know, heroes journeys featuring white people, the more I just look at a lot of them as just another retelling of white people, you know, positioning themselves as the real victims of colonization. All right. Um, let's keep reading. Blood sucking, as Stephanie Winkler observes, is a common metaphor for greed a trait often linked to Anglo-Jews associated with banking and stock trading. This coupling of Jewishness and greedy blood-sucking gained momentum as wealthy British Jews, such as banker Baron Lionel de, uh, de Rothschild, who was admitted to the House of Commons in 1858, gained influence in society. Eventually, excuse me, paranoia that Jews through their financial power and connections to royalty, would seize the opportunity to take over an empire 
facing even more complex challenges, helped drive the mounting anti-Semitism. Wow. Just that first part right there. Blood-sucking is a common metaphor for greed, a trait often linked with Anglo-Jews associated with banking and stock trading. I mean, I know I've heard of, obviously, this, you know, stereotype of linking Jewish people with greed, but I didn't realize that blood-sucking was a metaphor for that. Wow. Um, does any of this sound familiar? It should, because today's internet postings by conspiracy theorists often carry traces of just the sort of anti-immigrant and anti-Semitic tensions that show up in history whenever segments of the population uh, feel betrayed by elites and fear a loss of their own social and economic status. It may not surprise you that Ick, who wrote a theosophical work about the origins of Earth, also endorses the infamous anti-Semitic forgery the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which appeared in 1903 and was likely created by the Russian Tsar's secret police. Henry Ford, for one, helped circulate the pamphlet, which purported to reveal a secret Jewish society conspiring to, conspiring to control the banks, the media, and ultimately the entire earth. Though it was quickly discredited, the Nazis used it as propaganda. Ick denies animosity towards Jewish people, but whether he is or isn't deliberately using the notion of reptilian invaders as coded anti-Semitism, it is nonetheless the case that the idea tends to circulate, as writer uh, Mika Jart points out, among neo-Nazis, Illuminati conspiracy proponents, and various other groups that insist that we are being manipulated by sinister puppeteers who often just happen to be Jewish. Billionaire George Soros is a frequent uh, bete noir among this crowd, and he is often depicted as a world-dominating reptile. The lizard takeover, with its Jewish cabal links, has, unfortunately, become so commonplace that it even made an appearance in Netflix's hit series, hit sci-fi series, The Umbrella Academy, now taking some heat for its alleged use of anti-Semitic tropes in the form of shadowy society, in the form of a shadowy society of lizard people who run the world, complete with a Yiddish-speaking villain. Yikes! Yikes! Oh, that's a big yikes. Um, Kunin says, uh, Whoa, it's the same narrative today, retold, eating the blood of chicken instead of blood sucking. They just changed it a little bit. Um, Neil says, This is why QAnon pushes child trafficking claims. They believe kids are trafficked purely for the purposes of drinking their blood. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, my God. See, I hate it because I'm, I'm getting that QAnon thing that fucking QAnon people where they're like connecting all these things but it's just a matter of connecting why these conspiracy theories actually you know derive from the same problematic source um Jesus yeah I mean like that because I, I, I've always heard about that whole like oh the cabal like you know trafficking children so they can um you know they, they can harvest their blood and shit which is oh my god it's just so oh my god why do people believe this shit like why can't people just believe in some like other shit like believe that fucking mario and peach and bowser are real believe that you know you can double jump <laughs> believe that harry potter exists why the fuck would you want to believe this shit why the oh my god see this is just what happens when you have all these anti-intellectual conservative far-right people who want to like because my analysis of what's happening just as a side note is i feel like a lot of people of color a lot of progressives are um sharing information about the world around them exposing you know the system that we actually live in exposing uh the um rampant abuses in our work culture um talking about things that have oftentimes been dismissed such as the importance of mental health um talking about the inequality within our institutions talking about systemic inequality and racism um and so a lot of the work that is happening within the progress of society is being done by people of color and people who are just naturally more left-leaning 
And so I think what's going on is you're, you're having this, the essentially the inevitable wall of conservatism is colliding. And conservatives realize that, okay, well, if telling the truth and being critical about history and taking in consideration things like systemic inequality, apparently that is the leftist thing. And for, for us far right people, our thing is we need to come up with our own facts. Our thing is we need to figure out the real truth, um, which is hidden underneath, you know, these sci-fi books that we need to go buy from these old white men. It's like they really have just created their own fucking universe where they can rationalize anything. Anything can be a, a, a valid source. Anything can be an explanation for, explanation for fucking anything. Um, we are in very, 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 very scary times. Um, all right. History has shown that when panic is rising, institutions seem to be failing and the masses feel betrayed by wealthy elites. Finding scapegoats can seem alluring. If charismatic influencers are able to channel the grievances towards secret cabals, immigrants, and religious groups, eventually something terrible is likely to happen. Yeah. I mean, that's shit. Okay, well, um, let's... Sorry, I was like looking up this thing on reptilian conspiracy theory. Reptilians, also called reptoids. <laughs> oh, my God. How the fuck? Like, how are you going to say that with a straight face? Like, how are you going to say that with a straight face? Reptilians, also called reptoids, lizard people, reptiloids. <laughs> Saurians and Draconians are supposed reptilian humanoids which play a prominent role in fantasy, science fiction, ufology, and conspiracy theories. The idea of reptilians was popularized by David Ick. Ick. I don't know if it's Ick or Icky. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to pronounce your name properly. Um, so I actually wanted to read this little piece on David. And this is from the website hopenothate.org. Um, and it says, David Ick, the groundwork for QAnon. So I was looking into this guy, and this guy is a, like, he is just your typical, oh, my gosh, um, you know, uh, uh, they're taking away our free speech, and uh, uh, political correctness is, is making it difficult for, for me to say how I really feel, um, which I think is just so, f like, mate. God, I, I feel like we're like intercepting the greatest hits of all of the far right's bullshit. But one of his um, one of his beliefs is what is it? Um, yeah, yeah, the whole that whole like um, um, uh, free speech shit. Like my favorite thing is when conservatives believe and they are always advocating for free speech, but then they are also against people talking about racism so it's like you you are for free speech to the extent that you can say racial slurs that you can be a complete fucking bigot you can spread conspiracy theories you can spread lies about the vaccine which this man has he's been kicked off of twitter because of his conspiracy theories related to covid that's how bad he is um so you so 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 you believe that um that is the extent of free speech. But once you get into the, the, the zone of free speech where we're criticizing capitalism, where we are talking about the validity of Marxist ideologies, where we are talking about um, uh, slavery or inequality, like now that's, that's, that's a problem. Like that's what I just find, find so hilarious about these people is that they position themselves as if there are these intellectual powerhouses and they sit in their offices with all these fucking books in the background like Jordan Peterson trying to pretend as if like they're mouthing off these really bright things and it's like how can you sit there and be honestly like trying to position yourself as if this, as if you're an intellect when you're spreading misinformation about vaccines like it just it's fucking wild. Shell said, uh, freedom for me and none for the conservatives to anyone not believing what they believe. You know, said conservatives in general think people responding to them is censorship. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
exactly exactly like oh my god like i swear they uh, i don't even know how we're going to talk about this 50 years from now like if they're still if these people are still around which i hope they're not how are we going to explain to the next generation <laughs> oh yeah um so in 2021 um there was a virus going on but like some people didn't believe them because some people just thought that um like it was fake um, and, 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 you know, they thought it was fake as like 5G, you know, the Internet thing, right? They thought it was 5G. And then they thought that Bill Gates was injecting people with microchips. And then other people thinking that um, other folks had um, um, uh, reptile DNA. So, yeah, that's why um, that is why we were struggling with COVID, because um, people believed in a lot of fucking whacked out shit. All right. Speaking of ridiculous shit, let's go ahead and see what David believes. Um, Carol says Jordan Peterson and intellect in the same sentence made me choke on my coffee. <laughs> oh God, fucking Jordan Peterson. He look he he lost all <laughs> he lost all credibility when he started talking about how humans are like lobsters. Oh my God, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Why why? At least at least compare the humans to like octopi or something like that because they're smart and adaptable and fucking cool not to say that lobsters aren't cool but like oh god um antoinette says i still can't believe the media like fox is posting these family pictures on the beach and all this instead of this monster's mugshot it's disgusting <sighs> i can find his mugshot i but i shit you know me i what i would have done was i would have photoshopped his mugshot onto the family photo <laughs> But, um, yeah, fortunately, you're going to see a lot of people who are, you know, oh, he was such a good guy. All right. Let's go read this bullshit. All right. Oh, my God. Why is this top bar so fucking ginormous? All right. In May 2020, Sean Atwood, a former ecstasy trafficker turned YouTuber, released a 90-minute documentary titled UK's Hidden Shadows, marketing his film as having been inspired by Out of Shadows, referring to a Pizzagate propaganda film released in April. Excuse me. Atwood explores numerous historic cases and allegations of child abuse among the British establishment, including Prince Andrew's involvement with Jeffrey Epstein, Jimmy Seville's influential connections, and accusations made against former Prime Minister Edward Heath and other MPs. One of the key voices in the film, however, is David Ick, who has labeled Heath a Satanist as well as a shape-shifting reptilian in print. Um, QAnon spread in the UK has taken many by surprise, but the theory draws from a number of ideological uh, tributary, tributaries repackaging conspiratorial notions that have existed for decades. Few have done more to lay the groundwork for the theory than Ick, the most famous professional conspiracy theorist in the UK. Whilst Ick has derided QAnon, believing President Trump to be a fraud and the equivalent of a Hollywood actor, he has also spent decades promoting the notion that a single global ring of satanic elites are trafficking, ritualistically abusing, and cannibalizing children, often in terms strikingly similar to QAnon rhetoric today, uh, which I think it's I think one of the hilarious things about the whole like QAnon child trafficking thing is that, like one child child trafficking is a thing and that is a problem and it does something it is something that happens in the United States, um, and yet they don't want to draw the like most obvious link between Trump and his connections to Ep Epstein. Thank you. Um, Ick has gained a new prominence during the age of COVID-19, headlining conspiracy theory-driven demonstrations that have brought thousands into Trafalgar Square. Understanding his significance and his theories is one way to understand the spread of QAnon into a wider conspiratorial milieu in the UK and elsewhere. This is a little meme. George Soros personification of evil. Oh, look, and he put a little watermark of his website because, you know, yeah, he has to let everyone know that he's the one who came up with this idea of 
you know, the evil George Soros. The web of pedophilia and Satanism. Ick is today most associated with outlandish claims about a brotherhood of extraterrestrial reptilians who have enslaved humanity and created powerful human hybrid reptile bloodlines, such as the House of Windsor and the Rothschild banking dynasty, through crossbreeding. However, in recent years, Ick has largely forgotten district direct references to reptilian theory, which is just one element of the hugely complex narrative developed over his 30-year career. Ickism. Oh my god, what the fuck? He actually ha I can't believe he has. I can't believe people are her. What are they like? Ickist? Ickyology? <laughs> oh god. Oh my god. What are... I, ha I hate this timeline. I hate it. Ickism. <laughs> can't even say it with a straight face. Ickism inco uh, incorporates chemtrails. <laughs> oh shit. Why? 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 Ickism incorporates chemtrails, vaccinations, microtrips, mind control, radio waves, 9-11 trutherism, and a barrage of paranormal and new age beliefs. It is like QAnon, a super conspiracy theory capable of rolling any event, real or imagined, into its overarching narrative. Oh my god. Ickism. Okay, so I guess Ickism is like a, I don't know, like a the mother, the, the father of a lot, I don't know, I mean, I guess maybe not the father, but it is an umbrella that includes the greatest hits. Really? The, <laughs> the fuck? I mean, come on now. All you need now is, I mean, I'm pretty sure that they already believe or sorry, rather, they don't believe because they are deniers of the Holocaust or slavery. But the, it's the greatest hits because them incorporates chemtrails. Oh, my God. Chemtrails and vaccinations and microchips and mind control. Wow. Wow. We might have to look at Ickism after this. Ickism. Oh, God. All right, there are a few wholly original aspects of Ickism, which borrows heavily from pre-existing New World Order, NWO narratives, many of them drawn from American far-right militia movements of the 1990s, with his most notorious inspiration being the noxious anti-Semitic forgery, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. Ick also draws from a spate of false allegations of satanic ritual abuse made during the moral panics of the 1980s and 1990s. However, Ick's talent for communication and self-promotion, alongside his prior celebrity as a sports broadcaster, have enabled him to spread his blend of NWO narratives, anti-Semitism, and the paranormal to a wide audience. You know, it's interesting. I know that NWO, I mean, this is like, I don't know if this is fully related, but I'm pretty sure, because I remember... And I, I know there are probably more experienced wrestling, professional wrestling fans. Because I just remember, like, in the 90s, there was um, there was a wrestling game. I think it was, like, on the N64 called WWF or was it WCW versus NWO. And it was, like, a wrestling game that was, like, two wrestling organizations. And I... I never knew what nwo was like wrestling because they were called the new world order but i don't know if they were supposed to be like a fictional representation of this and and they were supposed to be sort of like the villains of the wcw i don't know i'm really curious if anybody's in like knows wrestling um curious to to know if this like is related um, Kundin says, what makes QAnon more dangerous than Ickism in previous iterations is that they gamified it with the whole Q, and Q drops and finding clues and getting assignments. It's almost like a decentralized cult. Wow, that's very true. That's very, very true. Um, and I mean, on t like t to that, to that point, I think what's even more, um, you know, scary about QAnon from a 
content creation brand perspective is that Ickism is tied to David Ick. And so you know who, you know, where ideal ideologies within Ickism come from. Whereas QAnon, like Kundan says, it's decentralized and it's sort of anybody can be this face of QAnon. And there are so many like, you know, QAnon influencers, people who make content because they um, like I, I remember I was, I was watching this video and there's like a chain of command of people who like they look for and you're trying to find these Q messages. Then there are people who translate those messages and create content. And so this is a whole ecosystem of conspiracy theories just taken to the furthest, furthest, furthest extremes. Um, all right. Uh, whilst his writings have developed over the years, his notion of a global elite satanic pedophile, uh, pedophile cult has remained a consistent theme from the 1990s to today. To take a statement from his 1990 book, The Biggest Secret, the Brotherhood hierarchy today are seriously into satanic ritual, child sacrifice, blood drinking, and other abominations that would take your breath away. Yes, I'm talking about some of the biggest royal political business banking and media names on the planet. Uh, for Ick, <clears throat> as with many QAnon followers, this evil cabal has been exploiting children for millennia under different guises. He uses the term Satanism to refer to a highly destructive negative force previously known among other names as Moloch, who he describes as an, as an ancient deity to which children were sacrificed thousands of years ago and still are today in the vast satanic ritual network. Discussion of Moloch, commonplace amongst NWO theorists, has been adopted by some QAnon followers today. Moloch is the god the elite serve, <clears throat> and they do as Moloch does. Wrote an admin of the UK Facebook group turned street movement eyes wide open. How quickly many unknowingly surrender their own children at the altar of Moloch, wrote Martin uh, Geeds. The most significant, un, uh, the most significant Orthodox QAnon influencer in the UK, after referencing a number of COVID nineteen procedures, <coughs> uh, strictly, uh, strikingly, uh, Ick also helped to popularize the notion that this cult is harvesting adrenochrome from its victims. For many QAnon believers, the naturally occurring chemical compound is at the heart of the conspiracy a potent drug elixir of youth harvested by the cabal from the adrenal glands of children who are tortured to intensify the drug's effects. Adrenochrome has been a feature of Ick's writing since the 1980s, claiming in the biggest secret, many satanic initiatives have the same addiction to the uh, adrenal chrome, uh, which is released in the body just before a person is sacrificed. It is produced by the pineal gland during periods of terror, he writes, later claiming that it is apparently most potent in children. He went on to affirm the notion during the peak of his reptilian obsession, writing in his feverish 2001 book, Children of the Matrix. Quote, Blood, the physical expression of the life force, is a key aspect of the rituals. The reptilians also feed off the adrenaline, that enters the bloodstream at times of extreme terror. The ritual is performed to increase this terror to its maximum at the time of death. This is the way the blood they drink is full of this desired adrenaline. Wow. It just makes me realize I need to add QAnon as like a, you know, one of the nodes that I need to talk about for my blood lies series on eugenics and scientific racism, because you know, you'd think that something like eugenics would be stuck in the past, but clearly this idea of, you know, people having um, these different features that can be passed off through the blood or even consumed by drinking the blood is some ridiculous fucking shit. Um, 
There are numerous other anti-Semitic tropes common amongst Ichism and QAnon, with Jewish individuals and organizations playing a central role in the many malevolent plots both Q and Ich describe. Both George Soros and the Rothschild family, archfiends in the uh, QAnon worldview, uh, have long been demonized by Ich as supernaturally evil puppeteers. Among other references, it is possible to discern shades of Ich's hybrid bloodline theory in early posts from Q. When referencing Soros and Rothschild, Q makes allusions to puppet masters, Satanism and sorry, I'm like super burpy. Um, Satanism and elite pedophiles, uh, but also asks readers to follow the bloodlines and trace the bloodlines. Again, Wastik has done much to popularize such sentiment. He is by no means its originator. The Rothschilds have been the target of anti-Semitism for over 200 years, and like many QAnon supporters, he stringently denies that his views are anti-Semitic. However, the coded terms employed by both Q and Ick function as a prop to allow plausible deniability while both continue to promote this ancient form of prejudice. And this is a tweet from David. It says, the elite torture children and drink their adrenalized blood. And this is a picture of a teddy bear that says, Even knows about they are lost to pedophile rings. Satanists and child traffickers that include some of the world's most famous people. Does this, I swear, boomers cannot fucking meme. If you're going to have like the boomer, if you can have like the meme format with the picture and the font, like, God, fucking boomers. Um, fucking racist boomers. Uh, whilst Ick has distanced, distanced himself from QAnon, he has also linked his ideas to related conspiracy theories, which have since been incorporated into QAnon. Ick has demonized Hillary Clinton since 1999, reiterating his claims in 2016 as the, pizza, uh, as the Pizzagate conspiracy theory gained steam. In a video titled Pizzagate, The Context... He urged a degree of caution about details of Pizzagate, questioning whether all the details of Pizzagate is supportable, but reaffirmed his belief in a massive elite pedophile network operating out, operating out of Washington, D.C., and Clinton's role in the sexual abuse and torture of young women. He went on to say that whether every aspect, assumption, of, or detail of Pizzagate is true or not true, it changes not one thing in relation to this. There is a global network of empathy deleted psychopathic pedophiles and Satanists. It's so funny because, like, this line there is a global network of empathy deleted psychopathics pedophiles is like pretty much the fucking description of these conspiracy theorists. X influence. Ah, it's interesting. All right. Uh, whilst Ick remains controversial among QAnon believers due, his, due to his anti-Trumpism and his extreme supernatural beliefs, he is receiving increasing recognition from the British QAnon scene and conspiratorial circles more widely. A common sentiment expressed by one user of a British QAnon Facebook page is, The reptilian side, nah, but the rest I totally get. Others are more effusive in their praise. For example... Uh, Getty's claiming that, uh, sorry, I don't even know what kind of pronounce name. Uh, Getty's claiming that, uh, AFAITCT, as far as I can tell, claiming, sorry, uh, claiming that, as far as I can tell, Ick, uh, Ick is a courageous hero who has been consistently right on this issue for a very long time. The 49,000 strong eyes, wide open Facebook group recommends new members watch Ick's presentations in order to understand the group with one member posting. Remember in 1991 when David Ick told us all that the world was run by a satanic pedophile pedophilic cult, how we all laughed with dozens of replies, affirming support. Ick, I'm oh sorry. This is a tweet from this Martin person. Um, that says, what is it? As far as I can tell, Ick is a courageous hero who has been consistently writing his issue for a very long time. Okay. Um, Ick has effectively exploited the COVID-19 pandemic to gain a new prominence, denying the existence of the virus in videos viewed millions of times. 
At the time, Ick was removed from Facebook in April following consultation with Hope Not Hate. He had nearly 800,000 followers. What the fuck? 800. Oh See, this is why, like, I, I, I'm so frustrated being a creative color on Facebook in particular because, you know, on top of Facebook trying to, like, you know, flag content from uh, creators of color, you know, in, in this attempt at trying to regulate our speech for going against community standards, it's like they allowed this dude, David Ick, to gain 800,000 followers, you know, not too shy away from a million people on his Facebook page, peddling the worst shit ever, and he just recently got kicked off? That's how you know this shit is so fucking rigged. Um, our polling our polling that month found that 51% of respondents had heard of Ick, with 12% having read a text by Ick or watched one of his videos in the last six months. Ick has also emerged as a central figure in a series of large street protests in the UK. The headline speaker in protests in August and September, which each attracted upwards of 10,000 attendees, with QAnon signs plainly visible in the crowds. Whilst Ick's views may seem niche, we should not underestimate his ability to introduce dangerous notions to new audiences. During a friendly three-hour interview on the True Geordie podcast in September 2019, which has received 982,000 views to date, he alleges a very common theme of pedophilia among elites alongside literally human sacrificing and animal sacrificing Satanism. And you can chart these bloodlines, if you like, back into ancient history the cement that holds this web together is pedophilia and Satanism. The London-based podcast primarily produces sports and comedy content and has built up 1.88 million subscribers, many of whom are young people. In disseminating these lies, Ick has helped to sow the seeds from which QAnon has grown. Well, 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 well. <sighs> That's a lot of shit to... Oh, my God. Uh, sorry, like, you know how sometimes like, you just... You want to go through down into a rabbit hole and, like, learn some shit. Sometimes you go down that rabbit hole and you're just, like... Your mind is tumbling and shit makes sense. But shit is just everywhere. And then you're just like... I don't know. I just feel my... You know, because in order to make sense of this, like, I have to, like, momentarily think, okay, there is a group of people who exist who think that there are actually a cabal of people harvesting babies. And it's just, um, my mind has to do mental acrobats just to follow this story. Um, I don't even know what to say. Quinnan said, uh, this is the modern version of eugenics. Dang, that teddy bear reminds me of the music video for Radioactive by the band Imagine Dragons. The entire video had a very savior, save the children vibe. It makes me wonder what what that band actually believes too. <gasps> Whoa, I had no idea about that. I wouldn't be surprised because Imagine Dragons seems like the kind of basic kind of band that would pander to that shit. Um, but... Now I guess the next step is to um, learn about ickism. I mean, we don't have enough time to go too much into it, but I just want to look. Oh God, this guy. All right, so his Twitter is ickism dot truth. I am unique. I am consciousness. Having an experience. Oh, let me make this bigger. I am unique. I am consciousness, having an experience in this body. I seek love and truth. I care not what people think about me. I will not be told how to think. <laughs> Isn't that all of them? I 
I guess he doesn't have any thing that he tweeted. Never mind. Hmm. I wonder if there's any other. I like how when you type in Igism, it shows all real monsters. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. So I guess this might be a little bit more difficult to to locate information on. Let me see if there's any news. Wow, there's really even barely any news about this thing. What the fuck? You would think that something that is like central to this whole QAnon fucking belief system would have a little bit more information. Uh oh. Hmm. That is very curious. Anywho, um, let's go ahead and see the comments. Carolyn says, elite pedophilic, pedophilia and cover-ups. Sounds Catholic. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, like the projection. I th- oh, my God. I think it's so funny how how often, um, whatchamacallit. I think it's so funny how often a lot of these far-right people point to Satanism um, as a way to automatically try to associate themselves with godliness and, you know, being, you know, uh, uh, true believers and true Christians. And, like, there's just, I don't know, there's just so much problematic, whacked out shit. And my my brain is turning into mush. Goodness says probably a lot more under David Ick than Ickism. Yeah, probably. Um, but I'm just yeah, I'm just fascinated that there isn't just more specifically about this. Um, and I'm, I bet you there is like, um, like in what what was it? Parlor in fucking four uh, chan, eight chan. Um, unfortunately, when you are dealing with a lot of these alternative dangerous ideologies. Um, thankfully, they are discouraged from the internet, so it's not super, super accessible. But that also means that it thrives within underground online communities. So I'm sure, I mean, look, this is a person who's been around for fucking years. And, you know, we were just were reading about how David X Facebook page it had 800,000 people. So... You can only imagine how much his ide- how, how much his ideologies have been circulating around uh, on the internet. David Ick kicked off Facebook. Twitter bans David Ick. Let me uh, see if there's any. Anti-vaxxers are in danger of becoming a cult. In danger? <laughs> that ship sailed. I mean, like, we're way past the da- we're way past the danger zone of it becoming a cult. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, David Ick makes cl- false claims that vax. Wait, what is this shit? David Ick makes false claim that vaccines are gene therapy. God. David X kicked off Facebook. Let me see if Google Images has any of this man's tweets. What kind of fucking outrageous shit he's, has he said? Um, he posted this thing. There is not a new virus. There is a new test. It's a trick. It's a scam. Check the facts and you'll see. Oh, Jesus. And he said, U.S. doctor, how can you make a vaccine for something never proven to exist? You must watch. Here he is posting on Facebook. Um, They want us living in fear. Women in Sweden already do. Eight out of ten stranger rapes in Sweden are carried out by migrants, with more than half of all rape convictions to foreigners. Study... Oh, my God. What the... See, this is why it's, like, irritating when people try to, like, strip away race and uh, uh, misogyny 
from these conspiracy theorists because people try to make it seem as if conspiracy theorists are alternative thinkers who are like, oh, I'm not into politics. I don't even really care about politics. I don't really choose a side. And yet, whenever they sprout any of their conspiracy theories, once you dig into it, you can very, very, very clearly see that there's a lot of racism um, within their justification of things. God, what else has he said? Open borders? Where are they going to live? Where are they going to work? What about the already jobless and homeless? Well, and David X says, desperate for solutions as migrants tide hits UK shores. Authorities blame social media. I I really fucking hate the way that conservative people <sighs> drum up all these fears about um, immigrants and the way that they always have this same type of like imagery of just, oh, this line of people, oh, all, all these people coming into the country. It's like, okay, well, let's go show you a line of QAnon people. Let's go show you a line of white supremacists. And, uh, all right, we'll look at one more of his ridiculous fucking things. Uh, here you go. Here's his tweet. Oh, this is leading to another tweet. Uh, Twitter has now put a warning for people who click through to David Ick's website featuring the video of the coronavirus conspiracy video. Update. The people are speaking and overcoming YouTube Vimeo David X fires video ban by sharing the link. And the thing says, you are doing fantastic. Ban David Dix. Dave, David Dick. <laughs> David X virus video seen by 4 million people already. Okay, whatever. All right, well, that is all of the conspiracy shit that i can handle um and that is all for today um i hope you all <laughs> I, I i know you all learned some shit i know it's sort of a step backwards because we're learning about conspiracy theories and the ridiculous people who believe in them and the horrible people who act on them uh, but i hope we all had a pretty engaging conversation i think it was really important especially the conversation about mental illness and you know the way that it becomes weaponized. But, um, yeah, that is all for today. And I hope you all uh, have a good Monday. I will go ahead and say goodbye to some of the people who are here in the comment section. If you are here and you want me to say goodbye to you, say something in the comment section. Because I can only say goodbye to the people who are who have commented recently. I don't have a list of folks. So let me go ahead and say goodbye to Kundin, to Carolyn, to Shantae, to Antoinette, to Neela, Cheryl, Larissa, uh, to Aiden, um, Danny, Christy, Chingming, um, Catherine, to uh, Carlin, to Maureen, uh, Edward, and to Tasha, Ross, and opal i think that is everybody uh cool yeah so thank you everybody thank you thank you thank you carolyn neela kundin everybody i appreciate it so much i'm glad you all spent some time with me um hope you all are uh you know have a fun meaningful week uh don't stress out too much make sure you take some time out for yourself for your own mental health get something to eat drink lots of water get your vaccine stay indoors wear a damn mask and take care. I will see you very soon. I love you. I love you. I love you. Bye, Freddy. Bye.